Mm. Just uh, I make it. I make it twelve o'clock for you. So I'm going to begin. And what has been on my heart to share today uh, is around um, small groups and the benefit and effectiveness um, and joy and uh, importance of having fellowship with other believers in a smaller group setting. And at Rain's Lane there are house groups, home groups, and perhaps other ways as well that you connect in smaller ways. And so and that's the sort of theme I want to share uh, with us today. Um, I've really benefited from being part of small group fellowship. And uh, that was true uh, at Rainers Lane when we were there and then coming here to Cambodia, being part of a team and having a, a team sort of life group and then being part of a house church um, and the fellowship that we benefit from there has been immense and so significant for us, a very supportive environment. There have been significant places in my life for spiritual growth, for Bible study and application, really grappling with the scriptures together, building community, praying for one another, serving each other in times of need uh, and in different ways, places to use uh, my gifts and so on. So I've really, really enjoyed um, being part of smaller group fellowship and really look forward to it as well. And we're seeing how the young ladies that we work with too are now gathering in a smaller group and just building that connection and it's so helpful for our spiritual growth and growth in character uh, and and so much of the new testament uh, is speaking to believers who were able to gather in smaller groups and able to fulfill many of these instructions that the new testament gives us towards one another admonish one another encourage one another love one another um and so those just a really really valuable um part that I believe small group in some form uh, has in our life, small group fellowship has in our life. So it's an encouragement, I hope, today to you uh, to consider that or to uh, maybe you're already in one and really enjoying it already. Uh, that's wonderful. And uh, we want to keep involved in the groups that we're in and, and, and give in to those and play our part. But perhaps it's something that uh, you've not done before and uh, I want to encourage that uh, for us all to enjoy the benefits and fruits of small group Christian fellowship and not to see it as just another meeting to try and fit into our already uh, busy schedules perhaps or just another arm or program of the church uh, because the Bible expects us to be in Christian community um, and not just attending a meeting once a week as such but being able to be in Christian community um, and speaking into each other's lives and being part of fellowship and building each other up and supporting each other as we walk with Jesus. So it's a really exciting environment I've found to be in. And COVID has given us an opportunity perhaps to remind ourselves uh, or realise the importance of, of smaller groups because um, the churches, as they have been meeting, couldn't meet in the same way in the larger setting that most churches haven't been able to meet um, in the way they used to. And we've seen maybe through COVID how dependent we've been on our buildings and the activities that we do there. Um, and I love the place of the home and uh, the the intimacy that can uh, you can find there in groups that meet in homes and we know that that was very common in the new testament the new testament churches met in homes didn't they um, so we're able to meet um, in smaller groups uh, sooner probably than we'll, we'll be able to gather as a whole big church uh, body again so just thinking about that opportunity that there is too at this season as well to recover or to revive or to rethink uh, the effectiveness and the place of, of meeting with it could be threes and fours, it could be ten, but a smaller group of, of Christians that really build each other up. Um, and so, as I said, that's been a really powerful part of my own journey and my own spiritual growth and, and walking with the Lord. And let me share a few biblical examples for us of the way in which we see smaller groups meeting and having Christian fellowship. Uh, we've got Jesus and the disciples, of course, Jesus calling the disciples and gathering them, meeting with them, walking with them, journeying with them, serving. The disciples have the opportunity to serve together, to learn, to grow together, um, to apply what Jesus just taught them, to then go uh, in that fellowship, in that group, to to live it out, to live out loving each other. In you know, they didn't always get on, maybe, so they had those opportunities to live out what Jesus was teaching them. And they had that um, regular interaction together. It wasn't just a one-off 
thing. And of course, small groups don't meet every day. They're not with Jesus, uh, with the way the disciples were together every day. They're not quite like that. But it's still a group that shares life together, uh, not only just a gathering, a, a meeting as such, but a group that bonds together, that builds each other up um, when they meet, but also outside of that. And I'll come to that uh, a little later, the ways that we still connect with our small group, even if we're not there with them um, that week, as it were. And so the early church met in homes. Uh, that meant that they were small enough to do that. Um, so that was, uh, let me see that happening. And we see in Acts chapter 2, every day they continued to meet together. They were in the temple courts, but they also broke bread in their homes. And uh, Paul talks about teaching from house to house in Ephesus in Acts 20 um, as well. Paul's writing to churches like the Ephesian, the Ephesian church, the Philippian church, and so on that are small uh, and meeting in homes. Romans 16, Paul says about the church that meets in the home of Achilla and Priscilla. Colossians 4, he talks about the church that meets in the home of Nympha. So there's those uh, groups meeting for fellowship that were small enough to gather in a home, even if it maybe was a larger home, but they were able to interact and able to uh, live out so many of the teachings of the New Testament that are harder to live out if we only are part of a large group on a Sunday morning. So we just see these great examples um, throughout Scripture. We've got these one another verses um, that we find in the New Testament, about 50 one another verses that we find in the New Testament. And there are many other verses that are similar, They're like bearing each other's burdens, practicing hospitality, mourn with those who mourn, praying for one another, love one another. And those are, are much easier to apply when we get to interact on a, on a, in a smaller group level, isn't it? Um, and we've also taught that church is family, uh, that our fellow believers are like family to us, brothers and sisters. We're relating to each other as members of a family. So to live out verses like the one another verses or being a family, we need interaction with each other, don't we? Um, and so, you know, being a part of a church, being a part of a body of believers is always meant to be more than the Sunday gatherings on a, on a Sunday morning. But having community at other times of the week uh, and having people that we can do life with. Um, and uh, Colossians 3 verse 16 says, let the message of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. So it's something we can do very easily in a, in a small group setting um, as well. And keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters, Hebrews 13, 1. And these are just examples of many, many one another verses that we can apply uh, really well in smaller group settings. The New Testament describes or, you know, gives a sort of a example or teaching on interpersonal relationships that implies that people know each other. Um, and often, you know, we can be a part of a church and not always know so many people. And even if we know people on Sunday morning, we don't get to talk to everybody and we can't um, have fellowship with everybody and we can't uh, hear everybody's prayer requests and we can't pray for everybody on a Sunday and we can't hear what's been going on last week that's really upsetting them. Uh, we can't hear all of that on a, on a Sunday morning. And as we read the New Testament, we read Paul's letters to the churches. He's He's assuming that they're able to interact together, that they're listening to each other, that they're bearing each other's burdens and, and having that kind of interaction with each other um, that, uh, that he's describing and in instructing them in. The Bible's teaching us to cultivate that kind of Christian community, uh, that we can speak into each other's lives, be a blessing, know each other's needs, know what's going on in so-and-so's life. And because they're they're with us, they're among us. We heard about it. We prayed for them last week. We've called them to see what 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 happened about that prayer request they gave last week. I love the the Sunday morning gatherings, uh, whether it's Rainers Lane or other churches that we are a part of, have been a part of. It's wonderful to all you know gather in the larger setting. But we can't pray for everyone there. We can't hear everybody. Uh, we can't help everybody. We can't admonish uh, another, another one of the admonish one another. We can't do all of that um, in the larger setting. And so there's such benefit 
and such a need uh, and such a biblical uh, example to us of being in community that's small enough to know one another and to, to interact in that closer kind of way. So I'll share just some of the benefits of small groups uh, for us that, that uh, I hope will just highlight how important they are and um, maybe you know you can see that that is happening in your group that's wonderful and maybe i hope it will be uh, something that uh, if you're not a part of a smaller group of, of christian believers meeting together this would just encourage you to to join in such a group or create one of your own as well i love how in smaller groups and this has been our experience we can chew on the bible together discuss it listen to somebody else's observations we benefit from their insights too uh, we wrestle with how to apply it in our context. We can have that discussion in a way that we don't get to have on a Sunday morning in the same way. We can talk about our context. Well, how does that passage apply in, in this context, in our context, tomorrow morning at work? You know, we can discuss it together and, and encourage each other in that way. So it's great for, for Bible study and application uh, and really growing together in the Word of God. Another benefit of a small group is that we can be known uh, we're made to belong uh, we're made for connection with other people you know no church leadership can keep up with everybody and everything that's going on in their congregations lives but but home group leaders and and together mutually supporting each other we can we can hear what's going on and know how to support each other uh, we can all know each other and be known ourselves that's a precious precious thing that i've, I've really appreciated uh, in my life. Small groups, uh, you know, there's a lot of loneliness uh, in society. Uh, there was before COVID and, and certainly still is. Um, but, you know, the enemy wants us to be lonely or isolated or, or separate. Uh, and if we just, we can kind of come on a sunny morning, we can go out and still perhaps feel lonely. Um, and so small groups are great for that connection and being known and walking with Jesus together. And that's uh, that's precious, uh, being being known and walking with others together, and that sense of belonging uh, to a body of believers that care for us. And that's another uh, benefit of the groups. It's a great place to grow. Uh, thirdly, it's a great place to grow. It's all for character growth as you interact more closely with people in a group, and it's opportunity to minister to others, opportunity to serve one another, to use uh, our gifts as well. Um, we can in that group we can be challenged by others there's accountability so there's, there's a opportunity for growth in those groups growth we can receive prayer fourthly we can receive prayer and pray for others in our uh, life group that's part of our interserve team and in our house church that we're a part of here every time we meet we hear from every single person about how we can pray for each other we we do that Sometimes we go, the men do that together and the ladies do it together or we do it all together. But we hear from everybody and then we pray for one another, pray for one another every single time. Um, that has been so important, so rich. So I encourage us to do that, to pray for one another every time, to share what we need prayer for. Uh, and of course, we pray for our church, we pray for our community, we pray for our world in those small groups as well. Um, we can also give and receive support. Small groups are a great place to receive support um, at different times of life, hard times, bereavement, or maybe we're moving house, we've had a baby. Um, so we can give and receive support is precious as well. Bear one another's burdens, carry one another's burdens uh, as Galatians uh, instructs us to do. Carry one another's burdens. Um, it's uh, often we can maybe be tempted to focus on what I get out of church rather than what God is doing in me and through me and how I can give and serve uh, to the people around me as well. So small groups are a great way to give and receive support. Uh, they're a great place to use our gifts, hosting, hospitality, uh, an act of worship we could lead, we could take responsibility there, we could offer to do that, leading a Bible study, cooking, you know, all that type of thing. We might have other... Our small group could host other events that we then take part in and, and help use our skills. We can use our skills to help run another type of an event. You know, if you can fix someone's car, someone in, in the group, their car's broken, you can help them there. Just so many different ways that our small group that knows each other, that knows what's going on, that heard about that problem, that heard about the kitchen that burnt down, you know, we're, we can be there. We can call uh, and just offer to serve and we can use our various gifts of different sorts in a group like that. 
and a small group increases the the presence of the church in the neighborhood doesn't it because uh, your street probably doesn't have a church on it um but if there's a small group there's a there's an outpost of the church there's a body of people who love the lord jesus who are there in that street that neighborhood now and so uh, small groups can also be a, a a way of doing mission of of reaching out of hosting things of inviting people uh, of non-christians seeing the way christians love each other um, and Christian community in action, the way they serve each other. They can't see that uh, if it's only Sunday mornings. So small groups are a great way for non-Christians to see the way that we care for each other. They hear about how our small group served us when we were in need. And that's a lovely witness as well, isn't it? And these small groups, as I said, are a great place to be able to obey so many of the New Testament's teachings about one another and being family in a way that just... Um, the larger gatherings on Sunday can't fulfill all of those things in the same way. So in your group, you know, uh, I hope that some of those aspects are there. Maybe it's uh, got you thinking about your groups or about being a part of a group and enjoying that fellowship of a small group. Um, and I hope that's going to be, yeah, just a helpful encouragement to us uh, and uh, think about, yeah, the potential and the benefit of being a part of a small group um, and, yeah, that's just a little taster of what we can expect or what we can benefit from or how a small group can can function. And we do those things. We do Bible study. It's definitely a key part of any small group. Um, the Bible is central. Um, you could have an act of worship each time. We could, um, you know, eat together. We have that praying for each other each time, as I mentioned, helping those in need, just seeing how we're doing. We keep in touch outside of the group as well. Uh, outside of the time that we meet, I mean, like if we meet every Wednesday or every fortnight, um, what's happening in between? You know, is there, we have a WhatsApp group uh, for our team and also for the house church that I'm a part of. We just look out for each other there. We ask for help. We say, where do you buy this? I don't know where to find this. Or we ask for prayer, that sort of thing. We can still stay connected um, in those ways. And, and maybe now, some of the groups can only meet online. I don't know right now um, in what it's exactly going to be like for you over the next few weeks. And, and online isn't the same, is it, in a small group? It, it doesn't have the same dynamic. But if that's all we've got, um, I, I would still you know, join in and, and it's still worth it. That connection, that chewing on the word, that discussion together, that hearing from each other, that praying for each other, it's still so worth it to, to hear each other, to encourage each other, to, to listen to God's word together and discuss it together and uh, yeah, just be a support through if it's online. It's, uh, it's not the greatest thing, but it's, it's, it's worth it even if that's all we've got. So buy into it, join in, jump in um, into small group fellowship. I love it. It's been so uh, important. I'm so, as you can tell, quite enthusiastic about uh, small group fellowship. Um, and I know there might be struggles that people have in attending. They, they get home late from work and it's a challenge. So I can't speak to all of those different things now. But I hope that the, the um, yeah, just the, the potential and the benefits um, and the effectiveness of small group in each of our lives um, will yeah, encourage us and inspire us to be a part of such a group uh, in some way that meets uh, midweek, evening, daytime, however it might work for you. Um, so yeah, that's my encouragement to us on this topic to uh, think about it maybe now, maybe pray. How do I apply this? How do I take it away uh, from here? Um, and just yeah, consider that, what that looks like uh, in your own life. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll see also if there are other prayer requests that have come in uh, today. If you do have a prayer request, do uh, posted in us. See you, Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Happy birthday to Dorothy, by the way. Dorothy had a very has a very special birthday. Um, happy birthday to Dorothy. Um, and I'm going to pray um, now about what we just shared. Uh, and if there's anything else that you'd like to pray for as well, uh, pop it in the comments, and I'll see that in a moment uh, as I'm praying. But let's pray about what we've just been uh, been hearing now. Father, I thank you for creating us uh, to be in relationship with others, Lord, to uh, serve others, to learn from others, to grow together in a body of believers. Lord, we thank you for that, uh, that opportunity that we have, Lord, and for the people in our own lives who've really spoken to us and encouraged us recently, Lord, we thank you for them. 
Father, I pray that uh, small groups um, and ways of meeting together in smaller groups would, yeah, Lord, I pray for an increase in that, Lord, in the church worldwide, Lord, just for the benefits that it has, Lord God, and the, the examples that we have are in Scripture of groups that support each other and encourage each other and, and obey God's word together in a smaller setting. So I pray that we would find ways to apply these things into the groups we already have and in enjoy that may be doing these things uh, really well already. I pray your blessing over Rainers Lane and the groups that meet uh, in a smaller way. Lord, I pray your blessing over them, that they would be rich uh, and nourishing and uh, great supportive communities of believers, Lord. And I pray that each person who uh, is listening to this would have um, some people, some fellow believers to meet with in some way. Uh, to encourage each other, just a, a few others perhaps, or, or a group that meets regularly to pray for one another and to, to look at your word, to support each other in our walk with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you for joining in. I don't see other prayer requests there at the moment, so I'm sure you're praying for various things. We appreciate your prayers and are very grateful to you uh, all for praying for us and uh, Karen's just popped in there that yeah it's really important in these times for us to learn what it is to put the one another commands into practice uh, in COVID times and and beyond uh, we can look ahead and see what what does it look like to enjoy that small group fellowship now and and in the future as well uh, so yeah thank you for listening for joining in and look forward to uh, being with you again at another point and yeah, thank you for your prayers and your ongoing love and support for us. I will uh, bid you farewell. God bless you all and uh, see you next time.